So despite having a six core i5 processor in my version, you can't really push this computer as you would be able to in case of a standard two-in-one computer. But I've come to realize that with the right kind of apps, you might not be limited by the CPU processing power as much. I'm gonna talk about 20 or so such applications that will make this computer feel more powerful than it is. But to be honest with you, these apps are not only good for Surface Pro, they are really good Windows apps overall. So if that sounds interesting to you, let's get started. Let's talk about utilities. These are the apps that run in the background, adding features to the core operating system. The first one that I have here is called Ditto. Ditto is a clipboard manager that stores all the items you copy, including text, URLs, and even files. I like the Windows clipboard history feature that recently came to Windows 10. This does not delete everything as soon as you restart your computer. Also, there's no limit on how many items you can store on Ditto as a clipboard manager. And once you have multiple items on your clipboard, you can access Ditto with a simple control plus tilde hotkey. Now you can scroll through all the items you want to paste and press enter to paste them directly. You can also press shift plus enter to paste something without formatting. This works with text, obviously, but also works with files if you want to paste a link to a file. Next, I have Power Toys. This is not one utility application, this is a pack of utilities, but I want to focus only on one of the features that this app offers. It's called Fancy Zones. Fancy Zone allows you to resize the window organization frames on your Surface Pro. For a screen that is smaller than 13 inches, this allows me to put multiple things on the screen while making sure the high priority items do not get the same space as the low priority items. And if you pair this with the multiple desktop functionality on Windows 10, you can create some very productive setups in a very tiny but very usable screen. Another productivity boosting app that I have here is called AutoHockey. The way this works is that you create a script that stays in the background waiting for you to press the hotkey and when the hotkey is pressed, it executes the script that you have written. This conditional activation of scripts makes this application very powerful and very usable. Although I don't use it to its fullest potential because let's just say I don't know how to write scripts properly and I don't want to invest the time to learn it. But the things that I use it for also add so much value to my workflow that I thought it would be worth showing it off to you guys. So I primarily use this as a text expansion and text correction tool. So you know how there are words that are supposed to be typed a certain way, but it's just too much work while you're typing to actually do it. For that, I have an auto hotkey script that corrects those words for me automatically. I also use it as a text expansion app, which allows me to type my phone number, my address, my emails much faster than typing it out. I also use auto hotkey for media controls on Surface Pro. I don't know why, but the Surface Pro type cover doesn't have controls for next and previous track, but with auto hotkey, I use the following key combinations for the next and previous track. Another utility that we should focus on is called Quick Look. All you need to do is install this application, navigate to the file you want to open, and tap the spacebar key on your keyboard, and it will open that file in a floating window. The reason that I choose this app over dedicated programs for each one of those file types is the fact that this app is so lightweight and it runs like crazy fast on a Surface Pro device. This is quick, minimal, simple, the kind of application that you would want to install on a tablet without a fan. I can't really close the utility section without talking about my favorite screenshot tool, so let's talk about that. I use ShareX as my screenshot tool. This tool allows me to take screenshots by selecting area I want to capture. I can also select a window I want to capture. This would also allow you to record your screen and convert them into GIF files or save them as video files. I know this can happen in the comment section, so let's address it right now. It's GIF, not GIF, in my dictionary. If you feel differently, well, I don't know what to say to you. Anyways, moving on to ShareX. ShareX also allows you to upload your screenshots automatically to a service of your choice. And the best part is you can customize hotkeys for each of these actions separately. Another category of applications I want to focus on are productivity applications. I want to touch Microsoft Office because in my opinion, they are the best Office suite on the Windows operating system and it being available for free via the web apps using office.com. I, I really don't think there is a good competition on the market, but that's just my opinion. I know a lot of people love only Office. A lot of people love LibreOffice. I haven't really played with those applications a whole lot, so I don't want to talk about them. Let's talk about PDF applications, one of the most boring productivity applications that almost everybody needs, but nobody wants to talk about. I believe Exchange PDF Editor is the most feature-packed free PDF editor on the market. It allows you to open PDF documents. 
You can also run an OCR scanner on these PDF documents. You can annotate on these PDF documents. And with the Surface Pro's pen support, this app is a must have for all Surface Pro owners, in my opinion. Now that we're talking about productivity, I have to bring my favorite productivity application, Todoist. This app literally runs my life and and although this app has a great web application, I would highly recommend that you download the .exe file from the Todoist official website. This app has a system level integration that allows you to start Todoist from anywhere and quickly capture tasks on Todoist without navigating to the application first. Also, please don't download the Windows Store version of this application. Just like all things Windows Store, this is hot garbage. Now let's talk about emails the dreaded method of communication that we have become accustomed to and will refuse to let go of. The email application that I would recommend to you is called MailSpring. Firstly, it's a free application that allows you to sign in to whatever email service you want. You have access to all the basic features such as notifications, email management, email signatures, but it also has features like Send Later, which lets you schedule emails to be sent out later. You have the ability to track your email if it was open. You can also track the links that you put in your email and see if they were open or not. And it also has a reminder functionality. The reminder functionality is amazing. It allows you to send yourself a follow-up reminder just in case you haven't received a response to one of the emails that you sent out. Now let's talk about note-taking on Surface Pro. With its powerful processor and a high-resolution touchscreen and a lightweight design paired with a decent pricing, it is one of the best computers there is for college students. That means a lot of people use it for note-taking. My favorite note-taking applications right now are Notion and OneNote. For me, OneNote is for handwritten note-taking, which includes mind maps, planning videos, thinking about things that need to be done, just making quick to-do lists. That's what OneNote is for. But Notion is where all my life is being logged. Any long form of input goes in Notion. Any important documents get scanned into Notion. I have a whole action center set up that allows me to take Notion in their dedicated sections. I don't do anything quick on Notion. Notion is a fairly new application in my productivity system, and I'm still perfecting to fit all my needs. This application can be so customizable and so personalized that I would never be satisfied with my personal system, to be honest with you all. Let's move on to creativity. It can mean a lot of different things to different people, but I'm going to focus on video editing and photo editing. Although now I have a fairly powerful desktop, but I started this channel using my Surface Pro. I edited my first 20 or so videos just using my Surface Pro. During that time, I've gone through multiple video editors trying to find the one that was best optimized to work with a system that's powerful but not cooled properly. And I, I used a bunch of them, but they were not optimized like Headphone Express is for Windows. Firstly, this app is available for free and it can easily edit 1080p videos on a Surface Pro. I know that the iPad and its output with LumaFusion dwarfs the Surface Pro when it comes to video editing, but an iPad doesn't run a desktop class operating system, so pick your poison. On the photo editing side, this was a fairly simple choice. I don't want to pay Adobe monthly prices, but I want a fairly similar experience, so I chose Affinity Photo. So Affinity Photo is probably the best Photoshop clone on the market today. With one license for $50 or $35 if you get a deal, you're allowed to install this application on as many computers as you want. It looks like Photoshop, has features at par with Photoshop, has keyboard shortcuts similar to Photoshop, has an online community like that of Photoshop, and it costs $50. Worth every penny if you ask me. So it is important that your very pro productivity device works as a very good media device when you're done working. So let's talk about media applications. So personally, I primarily consume media through web applications, so I don't have a lot of like media stored on my computer. I also have a 128 gig Surface Pro, so it doesn't really go well with that kind of size to store media on this computer. So in my case, I would highlight YouTube web app as one of my most used media consumption application. But personally, I don't believe that this is the best way to watch YouTube on your Surface Pro. For that, I would recommend MyTube. There's a beta version available. I will leave a link to that in the description below. So make sure you get the beta version. It is a little buggy, but it's a lot more feature rich than the one on the Windows Store. With this application, you can also switch to the picture and picture mode for passive video watching experience. It also allows you to download these videos in the background. So if you're gonna be offline, maybe on an airplane, hopefully soon, but this app will allow you to download videos for you to watch when you're offline. Other than YouTube for media, I listen to podcasts on audiobooks. 
For audiobooks, I use Libby. It is my favorite app to get free audiobooks from the library near you. More on that on a video right here. For podcasts, I like to use Pocket Casts, but it doesn't allow you to download any podcast. So when I know I'm going to be offline, I download my podcast using another application called Grover Podcasts, one of the best looking podcast applications on Windows, in my opinion. I wish Pocket Cast had a better Windows app, especially when most of their paying users are the people who are using their service on a PC and a Mac. They should probably give you a better application or at least an application that is at par with the Mac application. But that's not happening, so Grover Podcast is my solution. And as for the local media files, I don't really have a ton, but if I do, I use VLC Media Player. Everything that has an executable EXE file and a Windows Store version, the Windows Store version is going to be the crappy version, so skip that. Now with that piece of wisdom, I can safely say if this video helped you in any way possible, please hit the like button. And if you want more videos like these, please hit the subscribe button. Thanks again for watching. This is Geek.